Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today I'm taking a look at a 4-color perfect blob deck featuring the Consuming Blob, a blast from the past, a 5-mana creature with power equal to the number of card types in our graveyard and toughness is equal to the number plus 1. And then at the beginning of our end step we get to create a green ooze creature token that has that same power and toughness. So the blob can very quickly take over the board, but we do need to enable it and have enough card types in graveyard. And what better way to do it than a Jace the Perfected Mind can play it for 4 mana or 3 mana and 2 life. And then we're mostly interested in the minus 2 ability. Target player mills 3 cards and then if a graveyard has 20 or more we get to draw 3, otherwise we draw 1 card. So we're often just going to target ourselves with the minus 2 ability to mill 3 and then draw a card which will help fill the graveyard for the blob. And then if the opponent kills Jace that will also add Planeswalker as an extra card type in the graveyard, which is all fine by me. And then we're also an Atraxa deck, which also synergizes with having a wide spread of card types throughout the deck. So that's another nice curve topper that can help find our blob as well as another win condition. And then the deck, of course, needs a nice spread of card types. We're also a four-color deck, so we need some mana fixing. As we can see, plenty of tri lands in the mana base. And there's some domain synergies throughout that require us to have different basic lands in play as well. So at one mana, the full set of cutdown, just a necessary removal spell against the red aggro decks. Since a lot of our lands come into play tapped early on, we can still play a tap land turn one, turn two, cut down, and play another tap land, and then keep going. Then at 2 mana we can also use the Herd Migration, 1 and a green ability, discard it to search for a basic and gain 3 life, also valuable against the red aggro decks. Then a Leyline Binding we can often cast for 2 mana at instant speed to exile an opposing and online permanent. Then we've got a few one-offs, including the Tainted Indulgence, which can draw 2 and discard unless we have 5 or more mana values among cards in our graveyard, which we can also often set up in the late game after milling a few cards with Jace or with Renan 7 for instance, and then we'll be able to draw 2 at instant speed, which is nice. But we can also use it as an early discard outlet, since we have a few cards that can reanimate creatures from the graveyard, a one-off copy of Shieldred's Restoration, which can bring back a creature even though we lose life equal to its mana value, but we can also kick it in the late game to gain life instead of losing it. And then at 5 mana there's Cruelty of Gix, which can also reanimate a creature on the third chapter, which we can also read ahead to start from chapter 3. So the discard outlets early can actually have a bit of upside, since we can maybe discard a Blob or a Traxa, and then bring it back ahead of schedule. The Jukai Visionary counts as both a creature and an enchantment, so very useful for both Blob and Atraxa, since we can reveal it alongside another creature or another enchantment, and then we can use it early to maybe ramp, put some cards in the graveyard for Blob, and then we can later channel it to get back non-legendary cards from our graveyard, so it can also get back our Blob for instance. Then there's Shieldred's Edict to deal with Planeswalkers mostly after maybe finding it with Atraxa, but can also cast it early to deal with a creature or even creature token. The Modern Age, a cheap enchantment that also functions as a discard outlet on the first two chapters and then turns into a 2-3 flyer. Joint Exploration can be cast as a 2-mana instant to scry to and draw a card, or we can kick it, in which case we can also put an additional land in play, so that's another way of ramping. Alongside our three copies of the Celestus, the only artifact in the deck, and then we can always discard additional copies of the legendary artifact artifact as it switches between day and night. It's also a useful discard outlet, especially in the controlling matchups as we can discard our removal spells which aren't incredibly helpful. Then besides our drag to the bottom, which is a sweeper that counts the basic line types to give minus x minus x plus 1 to all creatures, we also have a one-off copy of Path of Peril that can be cast early to destroy all creatures with mana value 2 or less, and we can cast it later for 6 mana with its cleave cost, in which case it just destroys all creatures. And then we also have a one-off Liliana of the Veil, which can also take out opposing creatures, and the plus 1 can also function as a discard outlet to discard Consuming Blob or Atraxa to then set up our two reanimation spells. And then Ren and 7 is our our final planeswalker. The plus one will fill our graveyard for blob while finding additional lands to put in hand to help hit our land drops to ramp towards Atraxa. And then finding cycling lands is also useful since we can always cycle them to draw additional cards. And then the minus three can make a tree folk token with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control and also as a reach to help against opposing flyers. And then Atraxa of course once we play it can also take over the game by providing a ton of card advantage and then stabilizing the board if it doesn't get answered right away. And then our mana base has a lot of tri lines, four copies of Rafine's Tower and four copies of the Headquarters. Very important to enable our Drag to the Bottom and Leyline Binding. 
then a couple basics, which we can also find with our herd migration, and then a few dual lands to round out a mana base, a mix of pain lands and the Innistrad duels, so we can still play a few of our lands untapped on turn two if necessary, but of course don't want to take too much damage off our mana base either. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems keepable. Got all the black mana for Liliana and Drag. Facing black green. So I may want to cut down next turn, so I'll get a black land in play. And then next turn maybe play headquarters. And then we can still play turn 3 Liliana. Put on maybe a Junt deck. Black, red and green. Nope, just black, green. Well, don't mind playing a Liliana. And then we've got a few lands we could discard. This is my home, and I don't appreciate drop it. If we're putting some on Obliterator deck, then Liliana's one of our better answers. Discards Infernal Grasp. A drag currently giving minus four, minus four. Still needs Swamp to get to minus five, minus five. And a soul transfer exile to Liliana. Time for Celestis. And her opponent may be patient with her obliterator. Okay, one cut down can certainly go. And a herd migration can potentially get the swamp. Jace isn't bad. Waiting for Atraxa. Although we have to watch out that our opponent doesn't get a chance to fight Atraxa with an obliterator, otherwise we'll have to sacrifice seven permanents. Yeah, I'll get my swamp. And then we can play Jace. Now we've got a Leyline Binding as a 2 mana instant speed answer, which is a lot better. Do I want to play Visionary? Not really. We'll hang on to it so it doesn't just die. Invoke Despair is a good one. Yeah, that's going to hit Jace and draw 2. So next turn we could get three cards back from the graveyard with a visionary. And then um, looking at restoration, herd migration, and maybe cut down. Okay, for X and Arena, we might want to get rid of with a binding, although I'm sure opponent can get rid of enchantments here. So herd migration. Restoration could also just grab a land, which may be fine. Blob isn't bad, although opponent's got some mana untapped. So I'll play Herd Migration, keep up Leyline Binding for potential Obliterator. And then we can deal with the Arena at a later point. And then once our opponent's tapped out, it's going to be better to Blob. Although, once again, have to be mindful of a potential obliterator fighting. Happy to see you go for the throats. Right, there's the obliterator at long last. Still have to watch out for instant speed fight spells, such as a tail swipe. Right, so, they're gonna lead with bushwhack. Or binding and then see if there's a tail swipe in response. Eh, there's a tail swipe. So a sack three permanents. I think we just get rid of two creatures and a land. Forest is fine. Exile Obliterator. Even though I could exile Arena and then just drag to the bottom, get rid of Obliterator. And then I would still need a land to play a blob afterwards. Yeah, close call. 
Maybe it is better to get rid of Arena. Now Trunkside isn't bad either. So Cutdown can go. Or we could discard a Trunks I reanimated with Restoration, but can still do that later. So if I play a Truxa, I'll still have the mana to play a 2-mana Leyline Binding, which is uh, pretty important to answer Obliterator. Or we can take it slow, just drag, play Blob, and then hope they don't have a second Obliterator plus Fight Spell, but they've already used two. So I'm gonna hope that's not gonna happen. And then a 6-7 Blob applies a lot of pressure. And then Atraxa can refuel, or we can just bring back our blob if that's more fun. Alright, there's the Obliterator. Is there a fight spell? Yeah, number three incoming. Ouch. Okay, sacrifice six permanents. So, yeah, I guess we'll just keep the blobs and ride those to victory. Give them back Arena. Something like this. Okay. So what card type are we missing, or do we have all of them? I guess I could have sacrificed Celestus to add one more, but it's good mana fixing. And then nothing to get back with Restoration besides the Visionary. So... Lots of exploration. And sure, we'll keep both lands. Attack for 12. Make another blob. Arena puts them to 4. And it's unlikely for them to have another third obliterator plus fight. Alright, it's going to be a march for 7. Putting back up to 11, but that's sadly not going to be enough to survive. Restoration also capable of getting back our blob once again. Yeah, that was a fun game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Lots of cheap removal, and then Celestus to ramp into cruelty. Okay, turn on Swiss Spears. So glad we've got the hand we have. Still gonna cost me one life here. We'll wait to cut down, even though there's a small chance I get punished by two instants growing Swiss Spear. Possible they went for like a Felden instead, which I would have liked to take out as well. Okay. Might as well let them scry before killing Swiss Spears since they're tapped out. So we're still taking 3 down to 14. And we can keep up Edicts. Kumano, Gross, Swiss Spear. Do we want to just cut it down now that there's no Squee coming up? Sure. Alright, still no third lands, but at least we can edict their next creature. Mechanized Warfare instead, so our turn goes to waste. Alright, find our green mana at least. So edict can take care of the etching. Don't really want to take a hit from it. And then with the lands, I could Celestis and still... Get aligned with migration. At least we have a bit of life gain in hand. If Celestus manages to discard Atraxa, we can bring it back with cruelty. Okay, Raiju is scary. And if I migration for a planes, I wouldn't be able to binding since we don't have enough basic types in play. So in that case, I'm just gonna Celestus and Migration, and then next turn we can 
look into getting rid of the Raichu. It's going to deal quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Felden as well. Okay. I'm not going to have time to cruelty to tutor for a sweeper here, I'm afraid. So we're at four. And uh, should have done this before taking damage so we don't die to a lightning strike, but didn't seem to be the case. So play the planes, combining for four mana. Or can play headquarters and binding for three mana. And then I guess next turn, Atraxa. Okay. Get to gain a life, also relevant. And actually found a herd migration. So we might still be in it. Get rid of cruelty. Migration gain three, binding, exile Raiju. And Atraxa can stabilize us. So once again, make sure to gain the life before taking damage. And we don't have a swamp in play yet, I believe. Okay. So unless we die to burn spells, they'll have to deal with our life linker. Don't need another Atraxa, I'll grab a blob. Binding as our enchantment. Path of Peril should be good. And an untapped land. And then an artifact, why not? Okay, we've got the tools to win this game. Bone plays a land, so that's a good sign. And strangles their own Felden to go digging. But there's not a single burn spell that deals six in the spot. Lightning Strike is four damage. So yeah, we should be stable. And as soon as we get to untap, can play our blob. Binding deals with the uh, warfare. So discard my artifact to increase our cards types in graveyard. And let's just get rid of the warfare now. Okay. And next turn we're already presenting lethal. That was a close one. Phoenix Jake doesn't know what to do. Opponent can jump with Mishra's Foundry, I suppose. Although now the blob gets even bigger. If I can somehow put another card type in the graveyard, we could potentially still deal lethal here. So if I activate Celestus and discard either Visionary or Atraxa, that will do it. Awesome. And now we can also cut down the Foundry if it were to animate onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Can Edict on two if necessary, and then Celestus can discard Author Celestus. Start digging towards our win conditions. We'll keep Edict available. Okay, Celestus it is. And Commando can blow it up, so good to have a backup. They might as well attack for three first. That happens. Okay, just play another Celestus, I guess. Plenty of removal in hands. Demolition fields can maybe blow up our tri lanes, although we've got a few basics we can find. 
So which one do we like? Planes make sense. Could get a second blue in case they blow up Celestis and I need to cast a Jace. Even though all my trilands make blue mana. I guess they also make white mana, so... Okay, can activate Celestis if we'd like. Cut down can go. And perhaps a Swamp, although I'll need it if I want to cast a Atraxa. So another cut down can go. Five mana for Loron. Yeah, there goes my Celestis. At least we still have all our colors. Not double green, however. So we'll have to wait on the blob. And I'm not inclined to want to kill Loron here. Can't wait for them to extend into my Path of Peril. Edict can still deal with a Planeswalker. Double Restoration, so we'll probably wait for those to transform to then Path of Peril. And we'll take a bit of damage in the meantime. Okay, can play Blob now, although still gonna want a Path of Peril at some point, so think we'll wait until post-peril. Opponent can also return the commando. So definitely don't want to play a binding until after we take care of it. They're gonna try and demolition field us again. Probably going for the white source, but we still have a planes. Alright, there's a commando. So one more turn before we Path of Peril. And Elspeth will die to Edict as soon as we get the chance. Loran will hit us for three and uh, gain three as well. That's fine. So I'll take another 6 here, Herd Migration I can also cast, but again we're planning to path. So we'll save our threats until post sweeper. And Demolition Field goes for Sanctum. Okay, best case scenario, opponent plays a couple more creatures out. Alright, get to untap. And let's cleave this path. Okay, now the board looks a lot cleaner. Blob can turn into a 4-5. And we'll keep up the pressure with Wandering Emperor. Who harms my must content, let your blade... At least why it's not known for a ton of instant speed removal, so we should be able to make a token with the blob. We've got the edge in this fight. And then I still have the mana to cast a 2 mana Leyline Binding, could also play 3 mana Jace. They could have another one in hand, but we'll play the blob. Okay, we get our token. Probably see Nossification exile the blob. Late on arms hits the token. And another late on arms, fair enough. So herd migrations next. I 
and I'll block with everyone in case of another Wandering Emperor. That's fine. 4-4 four, four first strike. Still dies to our 3-3s. Three I Ganjo as well. Still ends up trading here. And another blobs, perfect. So take out Emperor. And then I can Jace for 4 mana and still blob. And our opponent explodes sadly before we get to see more blob in action. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems promising. Go to Sweeper for aggro decks. And then we might be on the reanimator plan here. Discard Blob to our Indulgence, bring it back on turn 4. Although Scrap Corcher gives the opponent some graveyard hate, so we have to be very careful. If they keep up the Scrap Gorger, I'm not discarding the Blob. Yeah, there's Glissa. That's a problem too. So, can Indulgence next turn maybe just play Jace, shrink down Glissa, which I guess can answer it for a while. And then I'm not sure what to discard to Indulgence yet. Binding I would like to keep, so maybe it's Path of Peril, or we could Path eventually to deal with a Scrap Gorge or two. Or maybe get rid of Restoration, since it's not going to be very effective going forward. Okay, Jay's shrink down Glissa looks good. And then next turn we can maybe look to binding Glissa, so we don't have to keep plussing Jace on it. Become subdued. Okay, Edict sadly deals with Jace before we got any value. So slightly regretting that sequencing. And Trespasser is more graveyard hate, so it's also shrinking down our blob, which is not ideal. Okay, drag should be quite effective now at least. Wipe the board. And now with a land, cruelty can set up maybe finding an Atraxa. Do we want to bind Shieldred? Sure. Would have uh, gotten the fifth land to play our various five drops. So now maybe Ren can dig for more lands, fuel the graveyard for Blob. Bangbuster threatens to potentially pressure our Planeswalkers, so does Foundry. Although I'm still kind of liking Ren and then just plus to hit our land drops. Could have also gone for Cruelty, check out their hands. But uh, haven't played a land for the turn yet, so this seemed fine. So now could potentially hard cast a Traxa that we can find with Cruelty. And blob up to a 4-5. So Foundry starts to pressure Ren. Okay, decisions, decisions. Can uh, keep plussing Ren. That's a lot of land. And then Cruelty. See if the coast is clear. And then maybe next turn blob. Could also search up Atraxa. Alright, so Bushwhack maybe alongside Obliterator here. I'll hang on to one of my cycling lands. Could also end up using Ren's zero ability to put a bunch of lands in play at the same time. So go for the throat means I'm not going to just run out blob. Okay, Underdog can crew Bankbuster, and then Foundry can animate to attack Ren. Would leave the opponent tapped out so I can potentially get my Blob to make a token. Although, 
getting an Atraxa might just be better. So we wouldn't be able to use a zero ability now to put lands in play. Liliana just answers the opponent's underdog. Yeah, I think uh, Atraxa makes sense. Could take the opportunity to get the blob going. And then I could still play Jace, shrink down underdog. Or I can play Atraxa, and then if they kill it, I just get it back next turn. Yeah, it's probably better still. Even though we'll end up discarding to hand size a bunch. So another Atraxa. Binding. Cut down. A land. And a Celestis. Having Ren and Seven in play here would have been awesome. Can still cut down Underdog at least. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Can cast turn to Indulgence, potentially discarding a Traxa in case we pick up a reanimation spell. Up against a Red Aggro. Yeah, probably need to play a Black Source now to cut down on turn two, although I guess we can always waste. Although it's gonna cost us a bit of life. Let's just play Death Camp Glade. There's a chance they play a 2-2 with haste that doesn't die to cut down Swiss Spear, at least we can still grab. Although it does seem like they might have an instant in hand, which can save the Swiss Spear. Well, we'll just pass here and wait to see what happens. Can always kill the uh, etching instead. Right, opponent taps out for Squee. That seems like the better target for cutdown. So we suspect uh, play with fire in hands. Another cutdown's good. So we can leyline binding to be mana efficient. Get rid of the Swiss spear. Another one. Yeah, the damage is going to pile on quickly. And a Lightning Strike. So we're taking 7 total down to 6. At least we can deal with all the remaining creatures next turn. Herd Migration is helpful too. So if I Herd Migration for another basic, I can cast a 2 mana binding, which may be the better play. So we want to leave up white mana since I'm gonna get a swamp. So I'm not sure yet what we're binding. Still suspect uh, play with fire and hand so Swiss Spear can probably get at least one more prowess trigger. And there we see it. And then they're not too far from getting back Squee, but uh, the Exile at least helps a little bit. So binding another Swiss Spear. And then next turn I can Indulgence plus Cutdown. Indulgence now. May as well. If we find a reanimation spell, can maybe discard a Traxa. Or we can discard a land. And then don't think it matters too much. Okay. We're at five. Phoenix check puts us to four. And then we're still two turns away from Atraxa, so that may be too late. Well, Blob can stabilize the ground at least. But we're still dead to a lightning strike. 
Not drunk, so maybe you turn late. So, can end of turn. Okay, no lightning strike end of turn at least. That's promising. Can block Squee and the token if those were to come out. Okay, get to play Atraxa, so then we're just dead to burn spells. And our opponent explodes, not even waiting to top deck a lightning strike. I'll take it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing blue, so I don't think I can keep. This is better. And then... Missing green here, actually, for herd migration, so maybe that has to go. Keep the removal, which we can at least cast within a reasonable time frame. Okay, found our green... But uh, plan now is probably a JSON 3. I can mill myself. Opponent on Jund with a Harvester we can cut down. Could also wait on Jace for a turn, set a binding here, play 4 mana Jace, which I don't hate. Rigging, that's a good one to get rid of. Could also keep binding for the creature itself, but that means having to keep a binding at all times. And if I want to tap out for Jace, that's not gonna work. So I'll just get rid of the rigging itself for now. Although it does imply that our opponent has some large creatures in their deck. Shakedown Heavy comes to mind. Okay, mill the Notraxa, so if we find one of our reanimation effects, those are also good draws. Could see an Archfiend as well. Can at least shrink down a creature with Jace, so it doesn't enable fight rigging. Drag is not going to be able to take out Archfiend, even if we find a forest. It's only minus five, minus five at most in this deck. So, can minus Jace, see if we find something interesting. And then, if not, play another Jace to shrink down Archfiend. I know where to find all the well, we could just go on the mill plan, but don't think that's going to work out too well. Even if we mill 30 cards between both Jaces. So, at that point, do I even bother shrinking down Archfiend? Yeah, I think it's still worth it. Can maybe use Archfiend as our alternate win condition by just shrinking it down, soaking up a lot of damage with Jace, and then they won't be able to set off a fight rigging. Okay, Luca can deal three with Archfiend, so they could finish off Jace if they wanted to. They could make a token. At least a token dies to drag. Probably just plus on Archfiend again, stick to the plan. And then drag the token. If we had a cut down, we could have finished off an Archfiend here, but uh, that's not the case. Okay, Harvester. Luca makes a token. So we just need to survive two more turns, and then opponent dies to Archfiend. And so we'll plus. And then the question is whether I play Jace and plus again. Would still end up dying to the opponent's creatures. So they're threatening at least nine damage next turn. Maybe fine to just play another Jace here instead of waiting, and then we might find some relevant interaction in the meantime. Cut down kills Harvester. 
that works. Could potentially wait it to see if they attack Jace with just a Harvester. Okay, so next turn Archfiend loses them the game, unless they can somehow proliferate. Which they may be able to if they're playing Drown and Icar, for instance. Opponent's making sure to take out Jace. Alright, what's the plan with Archfiend? No current plan, so pass a turn. Is that game? Or do they kill their own Archfiends? That's also a possibility. Last counter, and our opponent explodes. Alright, first time actually beating an opponent with her own Archfiend. So we get to see our four-color perfect blob deck in action. And yeah, while the deck may not be the most competitive deck out there, it's definitely fun getting to see a Traxa alongside consuming blob with lots of card types throughout the deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.